Test, test. Chocolate donuts make me go nuts. Okay. So, so, so many people on social media despise Elon Musk. It strikes me as odd, so let's look at the 17 recurring complaints. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Let's get my camera turned on. There I am. Howdy, gang. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you? Yes, Therese, everything is normal. 
Yeah, and if you're watching this on replay, there will be timestamps to everything down below so that you can skip around to the common complaints. Various points, skip around, all that big fun stuff. And uh, mad thanks to Dan Chutka, who uh, sent a one-time donation through PayPal. I cannot do this without your help. So, so, so many people. Gonna mute that. Gonna mute that. Yeah, all right. So there will be a Q&A at the end, so have your questions ready, and we'll try and connect on all those. So I was asked by a Patreon to consider uh, covering why it is that so many people despise Elon and all of his companies so much. Uh, I did some digging. I found this clever little website called Google, and I, uh, from there, found this incredibly awful website called Quora where the questions are discussed at exhausting length by doubly exhausting people who are very confident in how incorrect they are. And so, yeah, it's 17 major themes, but I broke them out into uh, three overall categories. Yeah, if you guys can hear me, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, leave a comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, who is this? So the big three categories are, he's a liar, he's a fraud, and he's a monster. Ooh. So let's take a look. So yeah, he's a liar. He says a lot of things that just aren't true. Um, he says we'll have full self-driving any second now. Um, and he's been saying that for so long. Well, the thing is, everyone's been saying that. <clears throat> because years ago, a bunch of different researchers all over the world at the same time got to from zero to about 90% uh, of the way to self-driving all at once. In the following year, all of them got to 99% all at once. In the following year, they were at 99.9. Guys, we're going to hit 100% no time flat. Well, it turns out 100% is not a thing, as Waymo has discovered after spending kajillions. And BMW just rolled back their self-driving ambitions. Uber and Lyft have sold off their divisions. It's tough. But impossible promises do not equal lies. Those are not the two same things. Those are not the two same things. He has promised the impossible and done it. So Elon Musk branded a liar who will do anything to boost Tesla's share price. Now, mind you, this is from 2018. Uh, and has changed a bit since then, but uh, the complaint remains. Um, he doesn't need to boost the sale price, the share price. It's uh, gone up quite enough. It's uh, you know high enough for him to realize all of his um, uh, compensation bonuses. But really, the impossible things he's done is make a car company at all. Who was the last car company to reach mass production? I don't think we can count. Uh, we got to go back, what, 70, 80 years? I don't even know. And I've looked at it before. I should remember that one. Landing a rocket. Now, mind you, there were only a handful of people who said it was impossible. Um, mostly what people said was that it would be impossible to do profitably. <clears throat> that it would be logistically impossible to do it as part of a business venture. And we know how that worked out. It worked out great. He's able to provide launches for less than anyone else. He's able to refly rockets three, four, five, ten times. The most recent uh, Starlink launch was a tenth time flown uh, booster. And the fairing halves have been used two or three times. I don't remember what the number was, but it was different for each of them. That's, that's doing the impossible. Well, he's a cringe factory. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Elon Musk's Gen Z sketch slammed for unbearable levels of cringe. How many CEOs do you think can go on Saturday Night Live and be anything other than cringe? I'm going to say most. I'm going to say there's very few who are just going to be cringe. Not sure if I said it the right way, but they're just... They're just going to be cringe because, guys, it's really hard to do. And yeah, his Twitter is a bit unhinged at times, but 
that's not a reason to despise everything a person does. That's, that's crazy. There's no new tech. There's no new tech here. The rockets, he got the patents from uh, NASA, which is true. NASA did open their patents to everyone. You and I were also free to use them to develop our own rockets. Um, batteries have been in cars for, for uh, electric cars were around before gasoline cars. That's not new either. Well, kind of it is. Kind of it is because he took it to a different level. And, you know, you got to... Tesla is not as disruptive as you might think. Now, mind you, this is from 2015, but the complaint remains. He's not doing anything new. Well, kind of he is. I mean, kind of all of his companies do. The Boring Company, that's nothing new. It's just a smaller diameter tunnel with cars running in it. Right, but it's not 50% cheaper. It's like 90% cheaper. It's... It's new. It's different. It's something that apparently people want. Well, he is, Elon is a fraud. <sighs> well, he pays zero tax. I mean, look at this. Elon Musk explains why his extremely, explains his extremely low tax rate. He paid less than 70000 in federal income taxes, and he didn't pay anything in 2018. Yeah, um, what this article kind of leaves out is he paid a half a billion dollars in taxes over this four-year period. Yeah, let's cherry-pick some numbers. Let's, uh, let's make our argument look good. But guys, you got to be realistic. He's, you know, if he's not getting the income, he's not paying tax on it. If you'd like to argue that the rich should be taxed more equitably with those who are in less than them. I am all for having that conversation. But you don't get to hate him because he has stock options that he hasn't uh, sold and takes loans out against them. That's how he lives. He takes loans uh, against, his, against his future worth. If Tesla goes down enough in, in value, the banks are going to come and tell him, you gots to sell. And not only will he, he'll lose everything, but he has the confidence that the share price will remain high. Philanthropy. Oh, he is not. I'm a full-on rapist? No, that's not what I meant. Uh, billionaires made record profit, donated record lows in 2020, zero from Elon Musk. Well, you know, uh, record lows for everybody. Um, Jeff Bezos looking good. The, the thing is, uh, he doesn't have a lot of cash necessarily, but he spent $150 million in a charity spending spree, and this was over and above the previous $100 million, whoops, didn't go down far enough so you could see it, $100 million that he had donated before, that we know of. So, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, man. <clears throat> That's... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's make sure that stream is still healthy. Yep, looking good. So, yeah, he is trying to spend his money in ways that benefit humanity and in ways that other billionaires may not necessarily be doing. 459000 to idea schools in Cameron County. $30 million to schools, city near his home, uh, his new Starbase, uh, Texas Starbase, a million to the, uh, what is it, the Brownsville Community Investment uh, Improvement Corporation, which is doing low-income housing and downtown revitalization, $5 million to the Khan Academy. I would love to be able to give money to the Khan Academy or to have my own Brian White Academy, but apparently calling something a White Academy is... It's frowned on. Yeah, so he wouldn't even be rich if it wasn't for all those tax breaks and free government money and subsidies. He's only rich because of our tax dollars. Well, um, 
No. I mean, mostly no. So, yeah, the, is big government grift. Well, you know, the $7,500, this article from 2020 is mostly about the $7,500 EV tax rebate, which went to buyers, not him. Uh, but indirectly, you can see how that would benefit the company and therefore the stock. But Ford gets that too. And Chevy got every bit as much as Tesla. Well, Tesla got more because they sold more on the long tail at the end. But everybody, Nissan still gets it. Companies are still getting that money. It still exists. It's still there. But let's talk about the other ones. I've heard people, I, I read people saying, well, SpaceX is only profitable because they got X number of billions from the government. Right. For launching rockets, for delivering payload, for taking astronauts to the space station, and for doing so at a price that was 40 to 70% cheaper than anyone else. So if you're mad that he's getting money for doing the job that had to be done cheaper, the only alternative is to give more money to a bigger company who's working less efficiently. That's government spending I can kind of approve of, you know. Well, he takes all the credit for his employees' work. The headlines, you, you've seen them. Surely you've seen them. Elon did this when it was actually Tesla. Uh, SpaceX did this when it was actually SpaceX. Right? He don't write the headlines, guys. He don't write the headlines. And well, this is fun. Is it just me or Elon never gives credit to others for the work done at SpaceX? I am not a musk, -a musk hater. I actually kind of admire him for having the guts to start innovative businesses, but there's a disturbing trend on social media and people in the tech industry that think he is the Lord and Savior working 100 hours a week to personally do this stuff. Well, I do think he is working 100 hours a week. The guy doesn't seem to have any hobbies. Uh, but more importantly, he does give credit. He does give credit. That's, that's... <sighs> When a factory opens, he thanks the workers, he thanks the construction workers, he thanks the contractors. That's, it's not him saying that he does it. And by the way, they slap his name on all the bad news too. It's not just the good news. Well, he was born on third base. He was born, if I was born extremely wealthy, I'd be a billionaire too. Yeah, maybe you would. Maybe you would, though... Being rich in South Africa in the 70s is, is, is a bit different than being even middle class in the U.S. any time in the last 80 years. It's an advantage for sure. The whole thing about the emerald mine that his dad loves to brag that he owned, his dad is not a credible witness in this story. Uh, and even if it had been true that Elon's father had owned an emerald mine, it wouldn't necessarily be relevant if when he left to go to North America, he only had 2500 bucks Canadian and he finished college with $100,000 in debt. Uh, that's, not, that's not what I think of when I think of spoiled rich kids. I grew up with some spoiled rich kids where they had everything handed to them through all of college and when they got out, their parents had connections that got them jobs. Uh, Errol's connections in South Africa were not helpful to Elon in terms of securing financing, in terms of making business connections. He was just some kid from somewhere else. So the advantages he had in South Africa were that his parents could afford a computer and that he didn't have to work to provide for the family while he was in high school. And that is, those are advantages that are pretty much true for most Americans reading that article and watching this video. Not everyone, not everyone, but for a lot of people. Hmm. Uh oh. It says I'm reconnecting. No. No, reconnect. If I'm connected, there we go, reconnected, uh-oh. Ah, I think I'm reconnected, here we go. Ah, pumpy Dumper, 
Yeah, I could have probably come up with a classier term for that, but a lot of people say everything he does is part of a pump and dump scheme. It is not. It is not. A uh, pump and dump scheme for the uninitiated is fraudsters spread false or misleading information to create a buying frenzy that will pump up the price and then dump the shares, selling their own once the price is inflated. Once the fraudsters dump their shares and stop hyping, the stock typically falls and investors lose their money. So that doesn't work with Tesla stock because he's never sold one share. That's pretty gosh darn unique among CEOs. A lot of uh, companies for GM will give the CEO certain amounts of stock compensation, which they frequently immediately sell because they want the money and their long-term faith in their own company is not strong. Uh, you could say that, well, he did that with Bitcoin. He bought a half billion dollars of Bitcoin, pumped it up, and then sold some. Right, but he, they only sold like 5 or 10% of the value at the time of sale. And that was done so that they could... Um, thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. It was done so that they could, according to the reports I'd read, ensure that the money could actually get back out of crypto. And it did. And it doesn't appear that they have sold any since then. So that's not, that's not valid. That's not a valid complaint. Well, he's just contributing to the wealth gap. I mean, maybe, maybe I would argue that he's not, you know, because um, he's made a lot of very small investors comfortable. He's made a lot of pretty big investors, pretty rich. He's made a lot of employees millionaires. Like there are something like 10 employees who are hourly employees, not even on salary, who have gotten what amounts to over a million or two in stock over their time with Tesla. That's, that's helping. That's helping. And I think that's, you know, great. Trevor Milton was pump and dump. Yes, he was. Billionaires shouldn't exist because if we let anyone accumulate that much wealth, they do stuff like this. What stuff? You know that wasn't in the best interest of people. The U.S. government organizing a coup against Evo Morales in Bolivia so you could obtain the lithium there. We will coup whoever we want. Deal with it. So that's a very inartful tweet. But that doesn't make it true. There is no evidence that there was a U.S.-backed coup against Evo Morales, and it wouldn't even make sense, which leads us to the fact that he's a monster. Coup de conspiracy. Dan Boulou below at Medium has this fantastic article. I can put the link in the description. Heck, I can put all the links in the description if that's something you guys want. Saying that Elon promoted this coup to get lithium. And it makes no sense. Uh, it was a underground rumor until Elon responded to that tweet, which was, you know, pretty dumb. And why is it dumb? Uh, why is the conspiracy itself dumb? Let's just roll down here. Let's see if we can do this. Make it a little prettier. Oh, that's not great at all. There we go. Uh, for the Chinese vehicles, uh, yeah, they get the they get the lithium from China, from the Sichuan province. They don't even get it from Bolivia. Well, surely they get some there. Well, uh, who are their lithium suppliers? Let's take a look. Uh, China, Australia, Canada, UK, and Canada. It's not even on the list. Bolivia is not even on the list. Right, but they're a big producer, right? They are not. Australia, Chile, China, Argentina, Brazil, Zimbabwe, and Portugal. They're not even on the list. They're not even close to the list. Look at how tiny these numbers are compared to the big guys. It's... If you believe this, my gosh, people, um, it is not a rational reason to hate him. 
is what I'm saying. Well, he banned repairs on this on his vehicles. You can't. Did you know you can't fix a Tesla without taking it to them? I know you can. Um, why doesn't Tesla let you work on the car you bought from them? You're not banned from doing so. Feel free. He doesn't. He doesn't have sensors in the cars. Yeah. Um, the general public can order parts for their Teslas. This is as of three years ago. You can buy the parts. You, you can buy the parts. Now, there's some parts that they're not happy to sell you, things that carry inherent risks of death, like the battery pack, but you can take them to a service center. And there are online sites to buy aftermarket parts, all kinds of them. I can make this a little bigger. There we go. Uh, this company, TSPT Sportline, Evanex. There are so many companies where you can buy aftermarket parts. And it's not just performance stuff. It's anything. You can buy anything your car needs. And take it to an authorized service center. Take it to a certified repair center if you want to do that. Um, you can fix your car. Well, I can't find shops that work on them. Well, <laughs> the Model 3 uh, is, for the most part, the most cars Tesla has ever built are still under warranty. So you don't need a repair shop for most repairs. And for those you do, you know, there's, um, there's, there's places you can take them. So this is not true. Well, it's the unions, Buster. <laughs> Play on words. We have fun here. He doesn't treat his employees well, and he busts unions. Well, he definitely is not a fan of unions. I mean, um, yeah, I think he said that they're not necessary. But I would take it a step further and say he, he actually doesn't like them. But he has seen what they have done um, in terms of, uh, I think... He conflates the failures of GM, Ford, and Chrysler with the unions that back them. I don't agree with that conclusion, uh, but I haven't looked into it enough to know. But saying he treats his employees unfairly, I think, is inaccurate. Um, if we look at some of the different websites... Uh-oh. We're still going, right? I think we're still going. If you look at some of the, if we're still going, let me know in the chat real quick. If you look at some of the salaries, uh, average compensation, 153. That's pretty good. Admin makes 50 grand. Communications, over 150. Design, 138. Sales, 161. These are good paying jobs. But this isn't the only site. Let's keep going. Here are some additional ones. Roofer, 25 bucks an hour. I didn't, I didn't. Oh, for the solar, gotcha. Software engineer, 129. Electrician, 40 bucks an hour. Service tech, 25 bucks an hour. Let's keep going. Uh, the benefits. Let's look at the employee benefits. Still going, good, thank you. So, let's look at the employee benefits. Now, I've had me some, some good jobs in the past. I worked for uh, Washington Mutual back in the day. He health insurance, best health care plan coverage for basic, drugs, vision, professional, uh, professionals, hospital room accommodations, medical supply services, and travel emergency. Life insurance, up to two years salary plus benefits. Vision coverage, dental, retirement savings plan, uh, employee stock, you can get as an employee, you can get 15% off Tesla stock. Uh-huh. Uh, Short-term disability for up to 17 weeks. Um, Long-term disability. Uh, I mean, uh, well, up to five grand. That's not super helpful. But other benefits, too, including 35% discount on everything except the cars. I assume that's except the high-value items. I've not heard of employees getting discounts on solar or power walls. Or the $10 million mega packs. I could be mistaken. Pandemic 
Schmandemic. That's the official term, by the way. Uh, Elon was heavily criticized for downplaying the pandemic early on. And I think that was right to criticize him for it. Drew outrage by arguing without citing evidence that there's some debate over the safety vaccines. He said the coronavirus is dumb. He said uh, it'll be down to zero new cases. Now, bear in mind, uh, he's not an epidemiologist. And this was, at the time, March, this was the official word from the government. So he was wrong. He was absolutely wrong. But I can see why he was wrong. Kids are essentially immune. Well, no, they're not. But again, this is March of last year when it was not as well understood. And, oh, I guess that's March of 20, isn't it? Mm. Well, still, dumb and wrong. But uh, we could point out that he's donated $5 million for coronavirus research in Boston. Now, I would like to see someone else who was wrong about the virus donate money to help with research. I would argue that that is learning from his mistake. Uh, That's what I would argue. And everyone does make mistakes. And they said, well, he was the first, you know, he reopened his factory before it was even legal to do so. Right, but it was the last U.S. factory that was allowed to reopen. All the other car companies had already been reopened when when Tesla reopened in Fremont. And, well, there was an outbreak after that, right? No, there were people who tested positive. There wasn't a factory-related outbreak. And the rate of folks testing positive in Fremont was essentially identical to the outbreak rate in uh, Alameda County. So, well, the Earth... The Earth is so much more important than Mars. Well, yeah, I would agree with that. Sanders, Musk should focus on Earth instead of space. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Earth is important. I live here. A uh, lot of, uh, Several of my friends live on Earth. But the two things don't have to be separate. Elon is working on Earth. He's got a company that makes electric cars and solar panels and is working to disrupt fossil fuel and pollution. Um, Yeah. We need a progressive tax system so that children don't go hungry, people are not homeless, and all Americans have health care. The level of inequality in America is obscene and a threat to our democracy. I agree. I agree. All those things. You're a senator, though, so maybe you should be tweeting about your colleagues more than more than that. Two guys in America, Jeff and Elon, own more wealth than 40%. That level of greed is not only immoral, it is unsustainable. Greed. Greed. Quick trivia for you. Who owns more houses? Bernie Sanders or Elon Musk? Now, I love me some Bernie Sanders. I donated to Bernie in 2016 three or four times. Little ones, you know, as he requested. Elon sold his houses. The only car he's ever been seen driving is the one that his company made, and he paid for it. Uh, What he does with his money is his choice. The fact that he dedicates so much of it to helping the advance society and technology, I think is pretty commendable. I think that's pretty commendable. And I mean, the the greed, the guy could spend the next 10,000 years sipping margaritas on the beach and never go broke, but he's still working every day. He doesn't have hobbies. Uh, And is it not sustainable? I mean, whose money did he take? Did he take money from someone? Does him having a high net worth because of the market cap of his company take something away from someone? And if it does, maybe it's the oil companies. Maybe it's the oil companies. Thank you for reloading automatically the hill to drive up your your view count. Good stuff. The cave diver fiasco. 
Remember that one? I'm not going to defend that one. That was super dumb. Super dumb. He uh, made very disparaging remarks about a highly decorated cave diver who was working to rescue the children in the cave in Thailand. And, of course, the guy sued him and lost. Elon Musk did not defame the British cave explorer, Jerry Fines, but that's irrelevant to me. I think uh, what he did was indefensible. Now, if that one thing is enough to make you despise everything he does across all of his companies, um, I would say that that's a poor reflection on your ability to think rationally and critically. Conflict material. Do you know how bad lithium extraction is for the world, for the environment? Don't believe me? Let's look at uh, the Institute for Energy Research. Yeah. Oh, Biden is planning to transition. He doesn't even understand. Mining and processing of lithium turns out to be far more environmentally harmful than what we thought. I mean, it's, can you believe that? It's worse than the unfounded issues with fracking. Really? Because lithium is pretty easy to refine. Who's this again? Institute for Energy Research. Well, let's see what kind of headlines they do. Uh, House reconciliation bill will increase electricity costs. Uh, Biden's clean energy standard means higher electric bills. Regulation and legislation are set to increase energy costs. These don't sound energy related. These sound political. Who is this? Oh, well, we're a nonprofit. Oh, well, we're uh, impartial and unbiased. Well, that's great. Maybe I should check. Oh, look at that. They're backed by the petroleum industry and the Koch brothers. And they deny climate change. Yeah. Heritage Foundation, Charles Koch, ExxonMobil, Charles Koch under a different name. Lithium extraction is very easy. And it's all, it can be done in all kinds of places. And it's, uh, yeah. Fossil fuel cars make hundreds of times more waste than electric cars. So this was a study that came out. And I'll, I'll, I'll put this in the description after the video is done too. They make hundreds of times more waste than electric cars. I, uh, where are you getting your information? And they're going to be making the batteries without cobalt or reduced to no cobalt. So cobalt is the one you actually need to worry about because it only comes from a few places well. And those are in um, Africa where it's uh, very, um, where work, workers are easy to exploit. But they're working to make one without cobalt, which requires more nickel. But they're shifting to LFP, which will make cars without nickel. LFP batteries don't use nickel. Lithium, iron, phosphate. They're pretty good batteries. They're going to work. They're already in cars in China, and they're now being made for cars in the U.S. So we're getting rid of the nickel, and we're getting rid of the cobalt at least as much as possible. So the conflict minerals kind of doesn't, kind of doesn't happen. So who's really behind all this? Well, disruption for all. Who is, who stands to be disrupted by Elon's companies? Got bad news for you. It's kind of everybody. And for every industry you show me that's going to be disrupted, there's another two or three upstream from it that will likewise be disrupted. He has plans to disrupt at least eight established industries. And this is a three-year-old article. So it's everything. So yeah, SpaceX, OpenAI, Tesla, Solar City. So energy, this is a disruption for any natural gas company, for companies that build power plants, for people that work in energy extraction. That's, that's a lot of people. That's millions of people globally. The automotive industry, that's so many people. That's every employee at every company that isn't Tesla. Now, I do think Volkswagen and maybe Ford and maybe G, I don't know. We're going to see some electric vehicles. There will be survivors. But anyone who works in any part of the automotive chain that deals with 
If you're a transmission specialist, your days as a manufacturer are numbered, and you absolutely would be justified in despising Tesla or Elon Musk. Telecommunications with SpaceX. Transportation. Oh, transportation. Driver is the number one job by, by workers, by number of workers in the U.S. That's a big deal. That's a lot of people who stand to despise Tesla. Uh, the, anyone who has a boring, who has a tunneling company. Others working in artificial intelligence. Satellites, you know, launch providers, infrastructure, aerospace, AI, healthcare. There are a lot of people who stand to be disrupted before we even talk about the clever robots they're building next year. And that would be everybody. That would be absolutely everybody. And, of course, simple jealousy. <sighs> simple jealousy. Billionaires should not exist. Well, mm, Bernie says it. This author couldn't agree more. Do they work? You know, a hundred billion times harder than you and me? No. But that doesn't mean they don't work. I mean, the Walton family doesn't work, but Grandpa did. So, yeah, uh, these math equations where they say, well, this, you know. <laughs> if you bought Tesla a few years ago, you very likely made more sitting on your butt than you did um, working. Uh, it's very possible. Uh, and we can argue whether that's right or wrong, but it is a thing. It's absolutely a thing. Um, ooh. Disrupting the advertising industry, too. Yeah, disrupting car sales, uh, the entire dealership model. Every used car salesman should be afraid of this, as should the advertising industry. That's a good point. Why aren't we taxing these guys more? You know, his net worth went up by $100, $200 billion. Why isn't he taxed more? Well, if you owned a car in 2020, it went up in value. Your used car went up in value in 2020 because of the pandemic. A lot of things you might not expect went up in value because of the pandemic. Should you and I have been charged for our used cars? Should the retired lady next door have to pay $30,000 every time her property goes up in value by a hundred grand. She's not selling it. She'll be there until she dies. I don't know. I don't know. There's a solution and I don't pretend to know what it is, but just hating people doesn't help. So those are my thoughts. Why don't we, why don't we take a minute Go through some questions. There's a couple here. How was that? Painful? Painful? I've left this up for those of you tuning in late. On the replay, there will be timestamps to all of these so you can skip around. Let's see. I should put this somewhere where I can actually see it. Put it over here. There we go. <laughs> all right. Howdy, Greg from Auckland. Good evening, Jeff. Welcome back. Who is this? Always good to see you. Pat Lopez said, Elon is just aggressive and optimistic. You know what? Why don't we do this? Nah, that's fine. Let's make it a little more visible for you guys. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, Elon is just aggressive and optimistic. I would 100% agree. Um, I'm optimistic. And sometimes I believe I can get things done that I later realize I am not able to. Oh. Elon is getting old and needs to work hard to see Mars before he dies. Jeff, he does. Yes, he does, Jeff. Yes, he does. Falcon 9 launch, not cost around $20 million. Uh, I assume that's in reference to the price discount, where I said that it's uh, 40 to 70% less. A crew-rated mission is probably 40% less. A, um, I've seen different price estimates. 
At any rate, it is vastly, vastly cheaper than any other provider, which is why something like 80% of the payloads in 2020 or 2019, I think it was 2020, were delivered by SpaceX. 50 isn't old. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh -huh. It will take 50 years, very likely. Let's try and find something important here. These are all great comments, and I appreciate them. But oil subsidies are fine. A lot of people think that, Greg. A lot of people are fine with everyone getting in uh, subsidies. Nuclear has been the most subsidized form of power ever. Um, and I don't know. It's, uh, it kind of had to be because it's not the sort of, it's not a dip your toes in the water sort of, um, sort of endeavor. It's either you got to go all in. Rob, congrats on 10,000. 10,000 subscribers, yo. You guys, I couldn't have done it without you. Quite literally, quite obviously. Thank you so much for, for all of that. Thank you. Disruption causes fear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just skimming. I'm doing my best here. Trevor Milton, Sean said, Trevor Milton was pump and dump on his stock. Yes, he was. 100%. That is my assessment as well. And that is what the um, uh, SEC or FBI or both or DOJ appear to be investigating. Elon should give money to people trying to improve air quality. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a $100 million bounty to find a reasonable method to remove CO2 from the air. Elon is disrupting old money, and they do not like that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hello, Daniel Stapler. Think we can go back to all-time highs this year? I don't know. The market is irrational. Um, I had a number of friends ask me um, all the way back to, you know, 250 pre-split, should I buy Tesla? And I told them all the same thing. I'm not a I'm not a time traveler. I cannot see the future. Um, I bought it and I am holding it, but I cannot tell you whether or not you should buy or what the future is because I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys think it's going to hit an all time high this year? I would love to. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Hmm. People get tax credits mixed up with the emissions credits that they sell to other makers. Yeah, Tesla has gotten a lot of money. That was forced by the government to be handed to the, from one company to another. Um, well, that's still free money. Yes, but those companies also saved money on their taxes by doing that instead of just paying the fine. So why aren't we criticizing Fiat Chrysler for buying all the credits that they bought for all those years? Criticize them. It, they were more profitable because they were able to do that instead. Treat your people well. You don't need a union. Okay, I think we are pretty close to done. Almost through the comments here. Elon can walk and chew gum at the same time. I agree, Roy. I agree. That seems, uh, we can, SpaceX can look at what they're doing while Tesla's looking at what they're doing and it, and both of them can do well. Upgrade your hard drive. Don't use a backup. Oh, <laughs> Hmm. Uh, I don't know what to say there. Um, we need nickel for the Cybertruck stainless steel. That's a good point, John. That is a great point. Uh, seat kill. Please don't get political. I'm not sure what I said that was political. I go very far out of my way to avoid politics. Uh, Bernie attacking Elon over something that is not within Elon's control is, I don't think that's political. No matter who makes that statement, it's relevant. Going to need some clever robots. Who should own the company? Oh, yeah. Let's see. I think we're just about there. Thousand this year, two thousand next year. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know. 
So, yeah. So, of course, I wish to, as always, give a great big old thanks to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, uh, an ad-free experience, except on the live stream because it's a live stream. I'll upload this shortly to, to the Patreon and uh, help keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. I quite literally cannot do it without you guys, and it really means a lot to me. Thank you. And I don't know if you've seen, but uh, Stephen from Solving the Money Problem likes to put out these videos where he shares openly just how much uh, money he makes from his views. And I'm thinking about doing one of those too, I assume, around my one-year anniversary. And I assure you, it will not look like his video, unfortunately. It's a tough, it's tough, it's really tough. It's really tough, man. But I'm finding my audience, and you guys are it, and it is awesome, and I love it, and I can't wait to see what the next year brings. So thank you, guys. And thank you for hanging out with me. That was really fun. Yeah. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the old stop streaming button on this end and see if that makes it not cut me off.